And I heard back in maybe 2000 that Kit Green couldn't get briefed into the alien autopsy program. So when he's just wait, wait, you heard this in 2000? Yeah, I heard that 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 he was trying. He could not get in. Yeah, and he, because he was a he was a physiologist, a doctor. Yeah, that's what he was interested. He was not so much the other stuff, and he couldn't. And I heard that. So when I heard the discussion when he was having with you, he he stated that very explicitly to yeah. me. And I'd heard that like at least a decade a decade right. ago, maybe two decades ago. I heard that that he was frustrated that he couldn't get in. Yeah, and that's what he wanted to see was the uh, the autopsy thing. Right. And so it, to me, it was like these guys because I used to see some of their emails. The odd email would sort of they would email with each other. Can, you know can, what I'd see? Can we ask? Like, how do you remember how you heard that in two thousand or so? Did you have one of one of that crowd? I think it was slip I think a little. I think it was Eric little, Davis. Told me. Well, Eric yeah. Davis. Now we know. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, and because they, they all work together, like Eric Davis did papers with yeah, with, they all know with each Kit other. Green. They they all, they all worked work. on different projects, and that's what I see is these guys. They're not evil guys. They're just guys like you and I. That you get ten percent, and you want the other ninety. And where are you going to go? Right. It's like Bigelow. You're going to go to the people who know. So it's like you go to Kit Green. I listen to everything Kit, and I've been listening to these guys all the time. So whatever they say, I may not believe what they say, but when Kit Green talks, I listen. When John Alexander talks, I listen. Mm-hmm. When Bigelow talks, I listen. Even right. you get these clues, and, and you even see that that Knapp indicated that um, Bigelow was giving hints that in 2007 he went on Knapp's show and basically said that they had this program going. And the money was coming, and and there was money wasn't coming from the government, and or no, it wasn't. It it wasn't. How do, how do you put it? But he said, he said there was money, a new funder, and this is the thing where all the, uh, uh-huh. the people had to sign off from UFON with so disclosure. Yeah, and and the money was coming from the government, and then on 2013, if you go back and listen to these guys' interviews, you realize they're all in on it before because Bigelow actually says what happens in the New York Times. Uh, Knapp is interviewing him in 2013, right. and he says. Are you in favor of disclosure? And he said, no, I'm not. I'm in favor of confirmation. That's what right. What you do first is you say UFOs are real and we don't really know what's going on. You do not bring up aliens. You don't bring any of that stuff. You bring that up years later. And then you see the, the, the New York Times thing. Uh, you have, we've got UFOs. There's a mystery. But it's not aliens. It's not E.T. We're not it's saying. Kind of that's like exactly his version what Bigelow said in 2013. Almost like that was the pattern and everybody followed the pattern. So it would make sense that Bigelow would bring in these people who are the experts, the right, same as you right. and I listen to them, and that they would listen to each other because they, they realize. And there's probably, uh, I've heard up to 200 people in this invisible college thing. That they've got these people, religion professors and people that are sort of on the edge, like this Tyler D. from NASA and all these people, stuff like that. And it's the same thing. We don't want to be identified, but they're all interacting with each other and talking to each other because everybody's trying to figure it out. They're they're just curious. And whereas people think it's like a, you know, a government thing. And it's like, no, I mean. uh, Think about what you're describing here. Uh, This is a, a larger and larger and more and more out there group of very, very brilliant, highly qualified people. And it's becoming more and more obvious to outsiders looking in that this is serious forward motion that's happening here. Yeah. Like this is, uh, you know, this is just more information that's out there that's not going to get back in. So, yeah. so there's definitely been a, a qualitative change in this. And uh, I think it's just a matter of time before we see this hitting the public in a wider, a wider um, Yeah. They did just on the details that you and I have, because yeah. you and I can see it very clearly now. Right. Even there's. Have you read the Jacques Vallée's third book? He's not yet. No, no, not yet. The third book is the best. It. Yeah. Because I actually I just go to the index and I look up Hell Put Off and it's like 25 entries on. This Hell is Put-off. really important and, stuff and, that Vallée's putting out. Yeah. And and I even yeah. go to like Art Lundahl was one that that was one of the guys before. Uh, top. He was the top of, at the weird desk. Supposedly the, brief three presidents. Yeah. So I go and I look and Vallée had all sorts of conversations with this guy. And this is the... Yeah, the Lindell is super the, brilliant. And, and so you go through Valet's thing, and he's talking about all these guys. It's right, all right, of them. Right. And you go and you see all these conversations, and he's actually outing these guys. All these conversations that they had in the 1980s with the Avery and, and, and uh, the CIA and this sort of stuff. It's fascinating. Where the, it's, I guess it's just the, the public has to be brought up to who these guys are. And even in the UFO community, most of the people, I think you would agree, didn't pay any attention to these people until you went with the document. Now they're all 
sort of experts on kit yeah. green and put off and stuff. And but you, you've known, that. and I've known. Yeah. I mean, you've known these guys for a long time as well. And you realize, yes. like, these guys are legitimate. They're hardworking Absolutely. people. Absolutely. And, and that they're just trying to figure it yeah. out. And they've Absolutely. got more access than you and I have. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know how much time we have, but I would love to ask, can we, can we uh, talk about the... Davis Sarfati feud. Oh yeah, can we get into that? Yeah, you can have ten more minutes. Ten more minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's the word. Before we have to. Thank you. Yeah, this we're, this, we're on our own little deadline. This here, is aren't almost we? like the what happened before. Like uh, from time to time, and I was in this circle, and I sort of said things I shouldn't have said, and they sort of cut me out of the circle. You? So yeah. <laughs> so, so so this is another, and I guess what happened? Brand cannot be contained. Like everyone, <laughs> everyone's laughing here. You just cannot. <laughs> I think you're like where my mother now is in life. My mother's at the point where she's like, I don't care about this anymore. I'm just going to say what I'm going to say. Yeah. I think you just joined that club. Yeah, that's right. At I think I've always point, been in that club. It's so like, this is like, but, yeah. but anyway, so, so now there's this new email chain, and, and I was never on it, but I got on it. I, I wasn't think, on it. I'm now only getting up to speed on this. Yeah. So I've been following this. So and yeah, I think it on. was because... I have this rumor that I've got these contacts with Pendolfi. I've never talked to Pendolfi. I've never, never. But I have people all around him. I watch, and, I, and whatever he tells them, I listen and stuff. Right. So they, I guess they fed it to me because they were taking a shot at Pendolfi. So I sent it to my people, and, and I knew they were going to send it to Pendolfi, and I'd maybe I'll get a comment back or whatever. And then I got on this chain, and it started going, and then this big war breaks out where they're talking about... For, for people who don't know, that, look, within our little circle, there's always these little email chains. So yeah. like there'll be maybe five or 10 or 20 people on yeah. the thread and they just keep it to themselves all through email. And what's happening is a smackdown between Eric Davis and Jack Sarfati. The, the two big physicists. Right. Over and, the metamaterial fundamentally. Yeah. So, er, so Eric Davis is the guy that TTSA, if they have any scientific programs, he's going to be running them. He's like yeah. the big, sort of like the 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 next guy after Putoff because exactly. Putoff's in his 80s, whatever. So he's right. the, And he's, he's got an intelligence background. He worked in intelligence. Yeah. And he's got this very strong scientific background. Plus, he's an experiencer. He, he has he, this he, UFO sighting when he's doing his graduation for his PhD. Him and his wife see this daylight thing flying over the top. So he's, he's, he fits all the... And he has written profile. a large number of really brilliant forward-thinking papers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and he very, very smart guy. And he's sort of like clearly, me. If you get him going, yeah. if you get him privately and get him going, I mean, he just talks, and lots of times he says things he probably shouldn't be saying. And, and so he, you get him, and then you get Jack Sarfati. For people who don't know, Jack Sarfati is always this Another guy one. who has the experience when he's 12 years old, where he gets right. the phone call from the computer on board the ship. And saying, his mother you said, are one of the 400 we're gonna give you uh, our chosen people. Yes. So he believes he's chosen, and then he has this bizarre thing, we're going to come back in 20 years. And so in 20 years, Yuri Geller comes to America, and he's reading this. And he says he's going to SRI, and then, then he really falls down the rabbit hole because he phones up SRI, and he said, I'm going to England, but i got a couple of days, and you've got this Yuri Geller guy. And they said, oh, Dr. Sarpati, we've been expecting your call. And he went, what? <laughs> and so he figures these are part of the 400 guys. So he's, right, right. He's, he's linked to all these people, but he's always never had a security clearance. He's always been sort exactly. of the weird, the weird physics professor on the outside. Like, and he's been fighting with Putoff for years and years and on, years. On zero point energy. Yes. And now exactly. the new debate is on this piece that Linda Howe got from... Uh, In the 90s. And, well, she got a, it was sent to Art Bell. Yeah. Allegedly a crash retrieval of a UFO from the 1940s. Yeah. Allegedly. But Bell got it in the 90s, so yeah. we, we have it that far back. He gives it to Linda, uh, Linda Moulton House, so she can send it out to some scientists to examine. Uh, and one of those was put off. Yeah. I and and, and put off in Davis. And TTSA asked for it. So she gave a time limit. You've got so long, you can have it for so Does long. Does Linda still control that piece? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's what happened. So they have this thing, and it kind of surprised me. And my take on the whole thing was, because we were having a discussion a couple weeks ago yeah. about... Who's right? Because they're, they're basically having a fight. Like, I've, I've got the answer. You don't so, have the answer. I, I just want to try yeah. to explain this best I can for people. So what Sarfati said, because I, I listened carefully. I mean, I'm not a physicist. Yeah. So I did my best. I listened to Sarfati's explanation as carefully and slowly as I could. And I stopped and I wrote, wrote it down and took my notes. And so my take on Sarfati yeah. is as follows. He's analyzing this metamaterial. He's talking about the metamaterial. And he argues that the metamaterial by its very nature, is somehow able to slow down the speed of light when light interacts with it. And by doing so, you're changing equations. One of the equations you're changing is Alcubierre's warp drive equation, essentially. Uh, everyone seems to agree that Miguel Alcubierre correctly 
did the math of warp drive back in the 1990s. The problem is it's always been the amount of energy required to achieve this warping of space-time has always been considered to be way, way, way beyond anything that we're able to generate. And Sarfati, in this interview from just about a year ago, is saying, nope, that's not the case. The metamaterial changes the uh, speed of light. When you radically reduce the speed of light, you are able, as he puts it, to soften the space-time barrier around the craft, and you don't need a whole lot of energy, and he, and he almost whimsically says, maybe a AAA battery would be enough to do it. <laughs> yeah. Now, that's, that's a wow moment. The question is, is it right? Like, I listened to that and I thought, well, that actually, from my non-scientific perspective, actually seems to dovetail with what Putoff said at his 2018 SSE speech, where he's essentially not giving the kind of detail yeah. scientifically, but I thought, if you're getting a kind of anti-gravitic effect, as Putoff was definitely hinting, um, then maybe it is in the material. Maybe something like that's happening. Anyway, I don't really know, but that's where it left for me until we come across this thread where Eric Davis, who's really the, Putoff's he, guy, the, the big guy, is, is telling Sarfati, stop talking about this. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And go back to consciousness and things that aren't actually real physics. Like, yeah, that's you, essentially you're, what you're You've destroyed this part of physics. Right. You're, you're putting together dots that don't exist. Yeah, <laughs> like on this private <laughs> little like, email thread, which is now leaked <laughs> out. Yeah. So, and Sarfati is not someone that you can just do a smackdown on either. Yeah, like he, he, just throws right he, he just throws it right back. He just throws it right back. So the question is, who's right? And yeah. I, I don't know. I and, don't know how to judge that. And to, and to me, the thing that struck me is that I really don't care who's right. I think the betting but, money is on Davis, though. Like all the, the little people that I've talked to, yeah. uh, I don't think anyone's willing to bet against Eric Davis on this. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Sarfati's been for 20 years. So he used to have a board back when the internet started. I remember he used to watch the board then, but it had all this mathematics. And he's always been fighting with put-off. They've always been at odds. Yeah, yeah. But I know about zero-point energy, you don't know, sort of stuff. And so when, yeah. it, when I saw the thing, what it impressed me was, I'm going, they're having a fight over this thing? And this is like the, the, the layered piece of metal. It's like two ounce piece of metal. And I'm thinking, if these two top guys, because uh, Sarfati makes the point that the physics world is a very small world. You yeah, know the Nobel guys, exactly. you know everybody. This is a big If something were happening, says. I would know. And they actually asked right. him in one interview, do you think we have the technology? He said, no, I would know. We do not I have the technology. Yeah. And that's what struck me is these two guys are fighting, and I'm thinking they can't levitate this piece of metal off the table, and I'm going. But can they? they I, I mean, are they, are they absolutely unable to? Well, Sarfati says, no, we, we, we can't do anything. We can't do. Is anything. he actually doing the experiments, though? Or is he just looking at No, Sarfati is all far. theoretical, totally theoretical. Yeah, he's, not, he's not in the lab with Davis and Putoff. No, no, no. That's the thing. He's got so no the, security clearance, and he has, so the he's just a is, theoretical like, physicist. What's actually happening there? I mean, I, I, did I get the wrong impression? I thought Putoff was implying that there is a gravitic effect on this. Theoretically. On this. Because that's what Linda said, because they had the thing with the terrorists. She's right. linking it into John Rowe's injury and, and the, the reports coming out of uh, the Rendlesham, the British yeah. reports. Personally, about, no offense, but I think that's a stretch. Okay, but, but, I think that's, but that, that's where they're linking it in. So she yeah. goes to put off. Right. And, and so put off's theoretical thing is if we hit this with enough terahertz energy, it will levitate the piece. It'll float the piece. So Linda's right. saying to him, well, do it. And he says, well, we don't have it. And then she says, well, what about the black world? And then put off indicates... No, we have not got anything in the black world that can create that kind of terahertz energy as well. Yeah, you need like a focused terahertz direct. You need a huge... Like, and I don't think that, from what I've learned, we're like baby steps in yeah. generating terahertz. Yeah. So that's what impressed me was yeah. that they, they haven't got this technology. So then it's like, what do they have? So when I see the, the latest statement by the Navy, that may be disclosure. So they go to Trump. So Trump's reaction was, so well, they, I don't really believe this. Yeah. So they may, the, the, what they may know is we've got all these videos. They were interacting with the Nimitz. They were doing all this sort of stuff. Right. We have all the photos. It's unidentified. We really don't know what it is. Even though we've got crash material, we've got bodies, it's almost like the core story. Remember the core story? Hell put off uh, Kit Green and Jacques Vallée yes. go to the Denny's restaurant in 1987, and they sit down and say, what do we know for sure about this? And the you core story is... Tell people this, yeah. We're being interacted by some sort of intelligence, ET, whatever it is. There has been recovered material, right? And we really don't know anything. We can't do it. And that's what Eric Davis said on Coast to Coast. He went on Coast to Coast and he said, "We shut down the program in 1989 because we had the material, but we couldn't do anything. It's so far beyond us." And then 
George Knapp comes out and hints that every seven or eight years they take it off the table and see if we can do anything and decide we can't and put it back on the table again, that they really don't have any technology. That was the impressed me about these two guys is it sort of confirmed the this fact is that... This totally consistent with everything in the Wilson document. Yeah, and it's, it's, uh, yeah, right? that's in the Wilson document as well at the yeah. end there. This like high-level is... guy that, that even the, the Joint Chiefs of Staff guy can't get. This other guy gets the briefing and he says, you know, we're not getting anywhere. Yeah, by the way, so relating to that whole thing, we're, I know we're bouncing around like ping pong balls off the wall here. <laughs> and we haven't but, even taken questions yet. But, but um, <laughs> one, one thing Kit Green said to me in our interview this last summer uh, was in relation to government access to these special access programs. Yeah. So i got to put this carefully because I don't want to put Kit Green into sort of, Kit Green gave me an explicit, uh, an explicit on the record statement about the Wilson document, yeah. which is actually a wonderful on the record statement. It's like, I, I'm giving an accurate paraphrase. I'm not supposed to talk about this despite the fact that I've read it, despite the, <laughs> despite the fact that I know about it. So because I can't talk about it, I'm just gonna say, I'm not in a position to comment yeah. on the authenticity of, the pro of, of this document, and that's all I'm gonna say about it. Okay, that's his on the record statement. Then he gave me an off the record statement, which by the way, I asked him, am I allowed to tell the world that you gave me an off the record statement? He said, yes. Yeah. And I'm gonna add that his off the record statement with me was like 30 minutes long. Like we had an, an yeah. exceptionally detailed conversation about the Wilson document. And one of his many insights about that document was simply that he said, look, a guy like Wilson, he said, theoretically, yeah. hypothetically, yeah. a guy like Wilson uh, did believe that he would have had access to this, but he was totally wrong. Exactly. He said, he was totally wrong. Uh, by the way, this is another criticism of the authenticity of the document. Someone said, well, Wilson would have no authority to look into these programs. That is true, but it's not necessarily true that Wilson would, would have known that. Yeah. It's not true at all. Yeah, the just, only person that knows is the person who gave the, the, the clearances. You don't what, know unless what, you're the guy. What Green, what Green told me, I'll have to look into this, but uh, he said uh, Secretary of Defense William Perry in the first either year or two of the Clinton uh, White House in 93 or 94 did a, a, a partial reorg of the Pentagon. And one of the things he did was to bury the special access programs even deeper within the system, making it virtually inaccessible yeah. for all but the smallest number of people. So here, so Green's telling me, so here's Wilson, uh, hypothetically, thinking that he would have access to this program, and he said, of course he wouldn't. And it was, to, to Green, it was just such an obvious thing. Yeah. Um, he, he said, look, the US government provides money and infrastructure for these programs, but it's the private corporations that yeah. really are running it. It's all private corporations running it. Yeah. So Wilson, it's, yeah, he's he's out of the loop. Yeah, because people need to know the the need to know part. Because there was the the argument made about John Alexander, the thing that he went to all the deputies and the heads and whatever like that. And right. the, the the counter argument and he was got no, nothing you, within the you're, government. You're a colonel in the, in the U.S. Army. We don't need exactly. a colonel. We need a physicist. We need so you may have a, a guy who's way lower, like just basically the janitor might have because he works in in the lab. He's got a higher security clearance, more need to know than John Alexander because you have a high title. People mistake that because you have a high title doesn't mean you have a high security yes, clearance. It's, and it's your need to know we're getting the five minute marker here so the one other thing uh -oh. I, that uh, green said and this is uh, again this is all relevant he said look i was 20 years in the cia and i had uh, apparently he had some pretty good security clearances at that time he says when i retired from the cia and i went off to work at general motors as an executive there he said my clearances became more more plentiful yeah. and better yeah. And he said, I think his phrase was, that is an exquisitely typical yeah. of people in the classified world. So when you're in the federal government, like the, I think the common assumption is that, oh, well, you're in the government, then you've got better security exactly. clearances. And it's not the case. It's, it's exactly the opposite. The opposite. And the reason, as he pointed out, is because in private industry is where all the brain power is. It's where all the money is. It's where all the action is. And, and so if you're sense. doing a program, like that's where the people are. And that's why your clearances become better. So when John Alexander, back in the 1980s, did his door knocking and you know trying to find out is there a UFO program and he got nothing, and he uses that as his as his uh, reason to say, well, there's nothing, there's no UFO cover up because I've looked for it. That, like that's the most ridiculous, yeah, uh, silly kind of explanation. Wasn't there a comment that that I think was um, 
Joe Bookman asked help put off at that thing. Yes, at about, SSE. And, and he basically is referring to John Alexander. That's and right. And he basically says, just because you're your friend, it doesn't mean you get you get access. That was actually a really <laughs> funny question. And, and that that's on Vimeo. People, I think it, you can still drop five bucks and you can watch yeah. that lecture on Vimeo and it's worth it. And at the very end, yes, and it is Joe, yeah. uh, who's our friend. I, I yeah. We've known him for a while. And he's a very sharp guy, yeah. for sure, very knowledgeable. And he asked a question to put off about because he's John good friends, Alexander, he's good friends with John too. That's yeah, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. He travels around, and he says, you know, if John Alexander has said like he has looked around for a cover up, found no evidence, and he asked Putoff to comment yeah. on it. Yeah, and I think, and Putoff was, uh, you know, pretty diplomatic about it. But yeah. essentially, I think the answer is, well, if you don't have the scientific chops, yeah, you're not going to be led into the program. Yeah. And, and, they won't uh, need you. And I guess we should point that these guys are con- like Kid Green was a contractor, so was Putoff and stuff. Yeah. and that I think people got to know because. Is still it always comes back is that you know them I know them, they're just ordinary guys who are very smart, right. who are very intense. They're they're into the mystery and stuff, and they're they're not the bad guys. There's this misconception, and that yes. whatever they say to I me, agree I, I listen very carefully. Right. That these are the guys. If you want the answer, you've got to listen to these guys. That they're doing the best. Even when put off, started his speech, he said, "I've never talked. I've talked about remote viewing a lot of times. I've never talked about UFOs." The indication, you know, I would have put me in jail. Now I can talk about it, he, and he's, he's been given with, the green light. He's talked with us about UFOs. He's talked with me about yeah. UFOs, but that's right, like never publicly. That was the first lecture he actually gave where he said, now I'm allowed to talk about TTSA. And I have to, I have to say, you know, I, I'm not buddies with Hal Putoff, but I, I consider myself a friend of his, and I respect him so yeah. very much. I think he's got integrity, and that doesn't mean that he's tell, told me everything he knows. He hasn't. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot that I don't yeah. know. But I've never believed that he's lied to me. I've never believed that he's tried to lead yeah, me astray. I would agree. I would agree with all yeah. of them. I mean, they're just they're just honest guys yeah. who are and, and just like you and I, as well. and, yeah. and they're in a difficult position in terms of having security clearances well, and stuff. And, and the last thing I, I want to say, and then you say what you want, but I the leak of the Wilson document. This was a very unwelcome thing for them. Yeah. They, they did not. Oh, want yeah. it. They had nothing to do with this, and they did not want it. And the word that I got from. Uh, I don't like to throw these names around because I don't want to get someone in trouble, but I got a definite word that uh, a number of the people in TTSA were actually really, an- they weren't just indifferent, like what Semivan <laughs> said. They were actually annoyed. Yeah. Um, and they were annoyed at the fact that uh, one person said that Edgar Mitchell's files were like in such an open condition that they could just be moved out. Like, yeah. This was a, a sensitive conversation. So there was actually a very unwelcome element to it among the TTSA plus, people. Plus you dropped it the first and second week of their series. So you sort of took away their... That, well, I didn't. <laughs> I, I mean... Well, that's when it started to, yeah, to yeah, go yeah, public. But, and it was sort of like every, they figured they were going to be the big star. And suddenly there was this new story that was more dramatic than what they were putting out. Well, yeah, that's true. But, um, but it also go, went against their kind of controlled oh, yeah. narrative. Yeah. They had a very specific... There's a UAP, potential oh, yeah, threat. Exactly. We don't know what they are. And suddenly you have this document coming out talking about they know all about crash retrievals and attempted reverse engineering. Like that goes way farther than yeah. we don't know and what they are. And it sort of went are. opposing to their message. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that was what was unwelcome. Aside from the fact that they were all embarrassed, uh, you know, you have a put off in green. They've each had half a century of high level uh, sensitive compartment and information clearances. And now their names in these various documents are out there. That's not welcome. In fact, for them. I think I mentioned that before. There was a, a leak before, and the re- word they used me was intelligence blowback. That when things like this happen, they all just sort of sit there and wonder what kind of reaction from the top. Like, why the hell did you say this? Why did you talk to Brigolo right. or whatever? And they sit there, yeah, and right, wait, right, right, and to see or do we have any jobs left or whatever. So you have to realize that. It's sort of like they should never have talked about this. They shouldn't have put it on paper. They should have controlled Edgar Mitchell's files right. or whatever. They're working their way. They're navigating their way And it was all going in. great. And all of a sudden, and, boom. And you can fall right off the path. Yeah. So. Wonderful. Our, our producers are walking <laughs> yeah, away yeah. here. In the other room. <laughs> and we got a producer here. Future plans. And there right. you go. Okay. Well, it was wonderful to talk. And thanks. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. I, I love it. We have to do this again. Yeah. This is like our little running commentary. Yeah. This is, yeah. This is excellent. So? Wonderful. Hope, Where did hopefully we do this? people learn stuff. Where were we? Oh, we, we were, were in the UK. We were, we're in the UK. UK we did yeah. this before. So I, I never keep. I f- keep forgetting. So anyway, now we're in Toronto. <laughs> Next time we're together, we'll do another one. There you go. It was, it was wonderful. I, I think people yeah. will learn something. Yeah, I think it was great.